And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Blood Bowl Team Manager. Woo! Football. Football where you can tackle the referee. Kill the referee. Well, that doesn't sound very fun. Well, in a video game or a, a, a board game, lots of fun. And a lot of people like Blood Bowl. It's a very popular game. This is not... Blood Bowl. This is Blood Bowl Team Manager. I've been looking forward to this game for a while. I was very curious to see what it was like. Initially, I thought it was a deck building game where you draft players for your team. Well, you do draft players occasionally in this game, but it's kind of like a complicated take that game. Does that make it bad? Let's look at it and I'll tell you. this game is to get the most fans. Points, whoever has the most of these is the winner, and each player gets a dial which they will use. Players are picking from amongst six different factions. You have orcs, or I guess these are the orcs, the other ones were the elves. We have the skaven, we have the humans, and each of these factions has different players that are in on that faction. Each player has a star power, that's how much people like them. Uh, and when the player gets tackled, their star power changes. So this guy goes from 1 to 0 when he's tackled, while this gentleman here uh, goes from 5 to 2 when he's tackled. He's actually not part of this faction, so get out. But some of the players are considered star players, and they will have stars around the outside. And players will have different uh, special abilities on them. So players don't start with their star players. Instead, they start with their 12 regular players. And the game takes place over a certain number of matchups, which you'll draw from this deck. Sometimes that matchup includes a tournament, and sometimes it just includes a special ability that players have to follow, some special thing that comes in that round. Each time you do this, you're going to be putting out highlight plays equal to the number of players in the game. So let's say there's three players. We would put out three highlight plays like this. Now, these highlight plays are important because players are going to be committing players cards from their hand to one side or the other side of that play. Whichever side you commit players to, no one else can commit players to that side, and you can't commit players to both sides. But when you commit players to a side, you're going to get the rewards of that side. So, for example, these flags mean fans, so if I commit a player to this side, I'm going to get two fans. If I commit a player to this side, I'm going to get another, I'm going to be able to draft a star player into my deck. And then whoever has the higher star power on both sides gets whatever's in the middle. So in this instance, you'll get two more fans and an upgrade. While over here, this card, you can see one player gets a star player, the other person gets an upgrade, and then whoever wins the match gets four fans. While the if you put your cards at the tournament itself, and any number of players can go here, whoever puts the most here is going to get three star players and five fans. So that's a big one. So players have to decide where they're going to put their players. So turns are very simple. On your turn, you simply take a player from your hand and you place him down on the field somewhere and then you take any special abilities that are on him and you may use them so this gentleman here has a cheating and a tackling special ability now cheating is mandatory how often do you hear that in a game you have to take a cheating token and place it on the card you have a pile of these tokens to the side and you'll be putting one of those on the card and at the end of a match, you'll reveal all of them. Most cheating tokens add more star power. But some cheating tokens are a whistle, like this one, which will eject your player from the game. Other cheating tokens will add fans, because players love to watch cheating. A tackle. When one player attempts to tackle another player. Let's say, for example, that this orc player is going to tackle this skaven player here. It's a three on two. When you do that, you will roll dice. If you are higher than, if your star power is higher than the person you're tackling, you roll two dice and you will choose which die to use. If you are equal to the player you're tackling, you roll one dice and you take whatever that dice is. If you are less than, let's say this guy was tackling him, you'd roll both dice and your opponent would pick one. So the only way you're going to tackle him is if you roll a double tackle. This means tackle, which basically means you exhaust the card by turning it sideways. 
and blank means nothing, and an X means the person trying to tackle gets tackled. If you tackle somebody who's down like this guy here, then they're injured and removed from that match. There's a football at every match, and when you play a card with a football icon, they can take the football, or if someone else has the football, they can push it back in the middle. This icon here with the arrow means that you can discard a card from your hand and draw another card. And so there's all sorts of players with special abilities, and some of the players have special abilities that when you put them down, they also have some other thing, like maybe they can take a tackle for somebody else, or like this guy here, when he has the ball, he can't be tackled. And so once everyone has placed all their cards on each side, all six of the cards are laid down, you check each match and the winners get their things. And now the winners will be drawing from a deck of star players that's made up of all the star players that you have, plus a bunch of neutral players. There's a different league for the three different factions, or each in their own league. So you might even get a star player from another team. And you might get your upgrades that come for your faction, or team upgrades and managers that you can put in front of you and then you can use them at different ones like this one here at each matchup where you have at least one down player you get a star power that matchup by one so these cards add to the level of the fun of the game you'll play a certain number of matchups depending on how long of a game you want and after the blood bowl matchup the final matchup the game ends and whoever has the most fans is the winner I really had a good time playing this game but reactions in my group were decidedly mixed on it. There were some people who I would say, those especially who liked what we call Euro games and careful planning and such, they, they did not enjoy this. They, they thought it was kind of too repetitive and random, especially with the die rolling. On the other hand, myself and a few other people just loved it. Uh, there were some people who were, I guess, a little disappointed that it's not Blood Bowl because you're not actually moving the players around. You're just drafting teams and kind of taking the games in a much larger context. But man, I just had a kick out of it, that throwing the dice for tackles, having weird things happen, having your own guy tackled, drafting a massive player for your team. There's just some really cool aspects to it. And the six teams really do have a different feel to them. For example, the Skaven are really good at keep moving that ball and getting cards from your hands to you get the cards you need, while the dwarves are just in there you know, straight, solid, and the chaos cheat like mad. And the whole cheating mechanic and the die roll, they do add a level of randomness to the game, which I think some people aren't going to be able to handle, but I, we got into the spirit of it. Like I said at the beginning of the review, it, it's to take that genre where I play a card on you, and I do this to you, and you do that to me. And normally I'm not a huge fan of those games, but this offers options and choices. And how am I going to play, what order am I going to play the cards in, because that really matters. And then how, what card am I going to attack and such. So I like it. It's very interesting. Drafting new players is fun, getting the new abilities. And I think there's a lot of replayability in this box alone. So for me it's fun. I certainly don't think the game's for everyone. I think I'd look for someone who would get into the theme. Those are the kind of people I would play it with. And when I do, we're going to have a blast. So that's Blood Bowl Team Manager. The card game. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.